Hello everyone, welcome you all to another episode of Identity in 15 powered by WSO2 Identity Server. Today we are going to talk about Scheme 2.0 Group and Role Separation in WSO2 Identity Server's latest versions 5.11 and 6.0. Before starting off, let me quickly introduce myself. I am Ravindu Ramesh Pereira a software engineer at WSO2 Identity and Access Management team. Let's begin the session by discussing how Scheme 2.0 specification supports roles resource type. In Scheme 2.0 specification, there's a set of well-defined resources. You may have already seen these resource types in WSO2 Identity Server. Users, Groups, Self, Service Provider, Configs, so on. Roles resource type is not there in the specification. But the specification allows to add new resource types using scheme extensions. In WSO2 Identity Server, we have used this scheme 2.0 extensions feature to add roles resource type. This is how the resource type extension is introduced in the Scheme 2.0 specification. We can define new classes of resources by defining a resource type. When defining those resources, we have to define a proper name, endpoint, base schema attributes, and we can define any schema extensions. Uh, we can call them extended schema attributes. So, these are the details of the roles resource type introduced in WSO2 Identity Server 5.11. The resource name is role. The API endpoint is defined as roles forward slash roles, which is the plural noun of the resource name. There are four base schema attributes that are display name, users, groups, and permissions. So let's talk about the group and role separation in WSO2 Identity Server now. Before Identity Server 5.11, both groups and roles were considered as roles in the Identity Server. They were managed by using either the roles section in the management console or the scheme 2.0 groups endpoint. Although those previous versions support both groups and roles together by using a single entity, those two terms have different meanings when it comes to the computer security domain. So groups and roles are now two separated entities in the latest WSO2 identity servers. A group is a collection of users. A role is a collection of permissions. Role can be assigned to groups or users. The roles assigned to a group will be transitively applied to all users in that group. In WSO2 Identity Server 5.11 and 6.0, a group can have only the users in a particular UC store because groups exist in UC stores. Therefore, a user in UC store B cannot be in a group for users in UC store A. Let's see the relationship between groups, roles, and users. When it comes to the group-user relationship, a user can belong to zero or one or more groups. And a group can have zero or one or multiple users. When it comes to group-roles relationship, a group can have zero or one or multiple roles. 
a role can be assigned to 0 or 1 or multiple groups. Same as the user group relationship, in user role relationship, a user can have 0 or 1 or multiple roles and a role can be assigned to 0 or 1 or multiple users. In Identity Server 5.11 and 6.0 documentations, you can find the API definitions of groups and roles separately. So both groups and roles endpoints have an endpoint to retrieve entities with filters, sorting parameters, limits and offsets. And there are endpoints to create an entity search an entity, get an entity by entity id, update an entity by entity id, delete an entity by entity id. You can visit this link and refer the API definition for more information. Let's look at some sample API requests and responses to get a more clear idea about groups and roles separation. This is the body of a sample post request for groups endpoint to create a group called manager. So we can mention group members also here like this in this post request. Here the display name is a required attribute and other attributes are not required attributes. We have to give the display name as a string and this members attribute is a multivalued complex attribute. Multivalued complex attribute means we can have many values inside an array for this attribute and each value inside the array is a complex value which is an object. This is the body of a sample post request for roles endpoint to create a role called login role. Here you can define a list of users and a list of groups to assign them this role. And you can define a set of permissions for this role. Here also display name is a required string type attribute. Other attributes are not required attributes. The user attribute and the groups attribute are multivalued complex attributes. And the permissions attribute is a multivalued attribute that accepts reference type values. Reference type value means a string that point into a resource in the server. This is the response of a GET request for getting a group by ID and the response of a GET request for getting a role by its ID. As you can see, we get the user store name as a prefix of the display name here because groups are stored in user stores. But we can't see the user store as a prefix in roles resource. Therefore, we can clearly identify whether it's a role or a group by using this use store prefix in groups display name. We get metadata, schemas and ID in both responses. For groups, we get members and roles in the response. But for roles, we get users, groups, and permissions in the response. Hope now you can clearly define the separation of groups and roles in WSO2 Identity Server. That's it for this episode. If you have any question, you can raise them in our community channels, Discord or Stack Overflow.
our dev team is always happy to help you subscribe to this youtube channel and follow us on twitter for latest updates from wso2 identity server thank you all and stay tuned for another episode in identity in 15 goodbye